Hello, I'm Olivia, and this is a presentation for my rig for R303, a mecha mouse named Earl. My rig was created for a short animation in a stylized style where Earl would be a secondary character. The rig has a master control, a control for everything but the master control, and a knee bend control. Since Earl is a character that focuses on jumping, a main control that allows for wide translation without having to move the master rig is very helpful. The mecha leg has an IQ control along with a working pole vector and additional controls that help in placing the connection point to the main body in the right place if needed. Since it is a mechanical rig, the leg cannot be straightened out fully, but in order to allow for the principles of animation, the leg movement is not locked and simply needs to be taken into consideration when animating. The leg extension is limited only to a certain degree of X translation and allows Earl to propel himself higher. This was done using a point constraint and an extra two joint rig around the extension part for the whole leg parent constraints link the mesh directly to the joints. I used the Mike Hermes video to give me a better understanding of the way I could use the point constraint. Both legs work correctly and the different parts can be manipulated as needed while also maintaining a functioning visual to them. This was achieved mostly by looking at another rig called Hecaton that had a similar mechanical leg. In order to understand the way it was rigged, I studied it through the outliner, taking it apart and searching up any new constraints that I found. This is how I further understood how to implement the point constraint to my own rig. The main body is connected up through parent constraints that allow a very simple squash and stretch to occur. It allows for deformation and exaggeration in animation. The rig also rotates and folds with these same controls. The arms have IK controls on them from the shoulder to the wrist and are further helped in movement through the clavicle control. With apparent constraint on the clavicle, it allows for the arm to straighten out without too much incorrect deformation. The rotation at the wrist is done through an orient constraint to the wrist joint, which allows for the same control to be in charge of the IK handle and the wrist rotation. The wrist control also has set driven key attributes added to it to allow for easy finger control, such as curling all of the fingers or straightening them out. The skin weight painting for the fingers was what helped me the most in understanding properly the way in which skin weight painting works. It was mostly through the help of two Ruby videos from Autodesk, as it showed me how to control my skin weight painting effectively by locking different joints and flooding the areas that I needed to. There's locked rotation of the y-axis of each finger in order to prevent too much rig breakage. They do not need to have extra stretch since it's a secondary character rig and the fingers can be the most fiddly. They are also locked from translating for this same reason. With the mention of skin waste, the wrist skin painting had to have considerable amount of thought put into it in order to allow for rotation without a forearm twist and not break the topology. It was mostly trial and error that I had worked through in order to figure out the correct skin weight painting around the clavicle and shoulder area. Despite being quite finicky in correctly placing the IQ handle where needed, the mobility of the clavicle helps greatly in correcting any problems around the shoulder, as well as allowing for correct mobility in moving the shoulder forwards and backwards, whether it is rotating or translating, which allows for exaggeration in movement, such as expressive shrugging. The neck control allows for stretch and rotation just like the rest of the body in order to allow for a more exaggerated animation. The neck control has the blend shape custom attributes attached to it. The blend shapes are chosen over a joint based face rig instead since it is a secondary character that does not need to have immense facial animation detail. There are mostly basic shapes primarily broken down into left and right controls where it fits. It allows for features such as smirking and winking and all the blend shapes work together wherever it is needed. I initially thought I had to separate out the head mesh, but using the class tutorial and this UIStudios.com video, I better understood the whole process of creating blend shapes. A bump I had come across was extraverse I had to merge after I had already created quite a few blend shapes. I had googled a lot and even went to Reddit to figure out a way to transfer the blend shapes I had already done onto a new version of the model with the extraverse merged. 
Through a lot of googling and putting together different tutorials as well as the directions someone gave me on Reddit, I was able to learn how to make blend shapes from other meshes and was easily able to keep the blend shapes I had already done. I used another tutorial from my Kermes to hook up my eyes to the control shapes through aim constraints. The ears have block translation at the base and allow only for rotation, while the other ear controls have both rotation and translation on them, connected through a parent constraint which allows for stretching the ears. I primarily googled a lot of the questions or any troubles I had and scoured the internet through multiple forums such as CG Society and Reddit in order to read up on ways I could solve problems. Most of the time I found answers to trial and error, working my way through connecting up the different things I had found and learned in order to inform me on how to solve problems in my rig. As mentioned before, I also learned a lot simply from studying other rigs such as the Hecatom rig, the Kaiju rig and the Anthro Tiger rig. 